Uh, welcome back to our uh, sessions on differential calculus. And uh, today we will uh, now continue in this session with the uh, study of uh, curvature. Uh, so let me start with the presenting of uh, the PPT. So give me one minute. So we want to talk about uh, curvature. So what is curvature? So let's try to understand it carefully and slowly through various examples. Uh, all of us believe this straight line is not curved. There's nothing curved about straight line. Straight lines are straight. So we want to understand what does this mathematically mean? Straight means what? Curved means what? Is what we want to understand. Of course, curvedness means how curved a curve is that also we somewhat know we don't know what is curvedness but we know what for example you see you take a circle with take two circles one with a small radius one with large radius which one is more curved obviously the circle with smaller radius is more curved than circle with larger radius uh, what does it mean yeah we will try to explore that so we want to capture curvedness of a curve by curvature. So let me give a few examples and then we will uh, hopefully that will make us understand. So let us start with the simplest one. So let us take this is our my uh, coordinate axis plane. I'll take uh, a straight line. So here is a straight line joining A and B. Clearly, if I am moving on the uh, this point, uh, moving on this line, sorry, I want to choose a point on this line, yes, and now I want to move uh, on this straight line. If I move on this straight line, clearly, uh, clearly means without uh, any mathematical proof, you can see that, you know, it's straight line means it is straight. There's nothing curved about it. What is same in this different positions of C is not yet clear. Something must be same. That is why we say it is straight. Uh, let us take another curve. So that may make more sense. Straight line is one thing where nothing moved. And nothing, I mean, the point on the straight line move, but I still don't know what does it mean to say it is straight. So let us check, let us take a circle with center zero and say radius five just random circle i taken nothing particular about this or that uh, sorry this i don't want so let me move this let me keep it to the center yeah here you see this is the circle and now i'll pick a point on the circle so here is a point on the circle and i don't want b Okay, and now I can move this point on the circle. Can you see that? See, I can move. I'll say C is not going in a straight path. C is going on the circle. That means it's. It means that it is curved. So what is curved is still not clear. But uh, we can understand what it means to say to be curved. To understand this better, let us try to do very obvious geometric construction. One of the first and most important geometric constructions we are going to do is to draw a tangent to the circle at this point. So let me start with this circle and here. Here is the tangent. So you can see that uh, when I move this uh, point on the circle, uh, of course, the tangent is also changing. Can you see that? Okay. Tangent is changing. And uh, now let us look at the following angle. I want to look at this angle tangent makes with the positive x-axis. How do I capture that? Here it is. So I want to take the point uh, intersection of x-axis and tangent. So as you can see, as I move C, D will also change. D will also move. And let me choose a point on x-axis some random point it doesn't matter to me what it is mm, 
uh, now oh, I want to choose it very far. So let me move this away. All right, now how do I do that? Okay, let's do this. Let us take E to be very far away from here. And let me measure this angle. This angle, which angle? E, D, C. This is the angle I want to measure. Okay, now I don't need any of this. So let me move back to my original position. I don't want to see that E. So E is far away. I know this. So now let me rec uh, recall whatever I had done. So here is a circle. I have picked up a point on the circle and I drew a tangent to the circle. And as the point moves on the circle, you can see tangent is also changing. Tangent is changing means one of the things we can say is the slope of the tangent is changing. You see slope here is slope is basically tan of this angle. It's tan of angle my tangent makes with the x-axis is called the slope. Uh, so slope is changing you see as I move C on this slope is changing. Whereas you okay the, so this, with circle you will uh, you can try to see uh, this you can't see it directly in this but uh, you can uh, anyway, basically you can make out that the angle is changing you see angle here or something angle here is something else angle here is something else so as my um, this point moves you see it moves the angles are changing angle it makes with positive x axis is changing you can take it in any quadrant it doesn't matter so the angle the tangent makes with uh, the um, positive x-axis will keep changing. Now, if I take a smaller circle, let us do the same thing for a smaller circle. So let us take a smaller circle uh, and do the same thing. Same thing means I will pick a point on this and uh, draw a tangent at that point to this circle tangent to the uh, circle at that point and then i will want to um, find the intersection of this uh, g and that is the tangent to the second circle and a positive x axis and i want to find the angle let me write that angle also which angle I want everything in one picture. I should have thought of this just one minute. Let's move e a bit closer. And I want this angle. Angle the tangent makes with the positive x axis. This is the new angle. Correct? Oops, sorry. Uh, here is the angle. Angle made but this angle E H G. This is the new angle. So what I want to tell is the following. Mm -hmm. You see here, there are two angles here. Let me move this D away. This is point D. This is point H. You can see two angles, alpha and beta. Clearly, alpha is bigger than beta in this case. Um, I mean, C is here. Of course, C goes away farther than that. Alpha will become bigger. No problem. I hope everybody is understanding what is alpha, what is beta. This is the angle made by the tangent with the x axis. Now, what I want to say is if I move C a little bit, there is a change in the angle. For example, if I move from this position to this position some length i have moved the arc length of wherever i have moved this length i have moved and you can see the angle has changed some amount now if i move the same amount on this the change in angle is much more that's what i want you to observe how do i know that you see for example let us start let us to start with let us start both the points on the x axis itself now i will move half here 
So the angle is 135 degrees. Half if I move, it's 135 degrees. Initially, it was 180 degrees. I moved half the arc length. If the same amount I move here, then you see the angle will not. So this is how much I'll have moved. So then angle change in angle alpha is not much. I mean, it's less than what is change in beta. So the change in angle between the tangent and the x-axis as we move on the circle, respective circles, is what captures curvature. Means I, I'll say this is more curved because for the same distance traveled on this curve, the change in angle is more here. For the same, if I go from here to here, whatever here means F to G, I will go. Same distance if I travel from here to here, the change in angle in alpha and beta you compare. Clearly change in beta is more, which means the way we say it is that curvature of this circle is more than curvature of this circle. Curvature of this circle, inner circle, is more because this angle changes faster. Faster means as I it's compared to arc length, means compared to how far have I moved on this circle. That is what curvature is all about. Curvature is all about rate of change of this angle with respect to arc length. Actually, magnitude of it. Well, I'll come to that in two minutes. So this, how this angle is changing when I move on this arc, move on this circle, to capture that is to capture curvature. That is what I'll call, how, how much it is changing at this point is the curvature at this point. You will observe, if you go and actually do the experiments and actually try to see how much distance this has moved and how much angle has changed, you will see that whatever distance it moves, the change in angle is the same. That means if you move here one centimeter, on the circle, there is a change in angle, some theta. If you move ang uh, one more centimeter, the change in angle will be same. You move one more centimeter, change in angle will be same. Angle will not be same. Change in angle will be same. So that is what calculus is all about. Calculus is trying to capture changes. So change in angle with respect to arc length. That means how much distance I have gone here. That is what curvature captures. Let us try to look at one more example. Uh, let us try to draw an ellipse um, that will uh, give us a better picture also. Let us draw an ellipse. I want to draw an ellipse. Uh, I need two foci and uh, some point like this. Okay. Let me do this. Okay. So I don't need A, B, C. So I won't. I'll delete them. I'll retain the ellipse and now I want to pick a point randomly on ellipse. Yeah, I picked it up. Then I want to draw tangent to the ellipse. I know nobody will ask these questions in the exam. That's okay. You try to learn these topics. They are very useful. So same construction I'm doing. I'm trying to find angle between the tangent and the x-axis. That's what I'm trying to do. So let me pick another point mm. to measure that angle. I basically need to pick up a point uh, far away so that, yeah. So this angle is what I want to measure. Which angle? F E D is the angle which I want to measure. This angle. So what I want to say is. As I move on the ellipse, as I move means as I move D on ellipse, you can see that angle is changing. Correct? And here now, angle here is 21.1 degrees, as you can see on the uh, screen. As I move D, you will see the angle is changing. Here you see, if I move this much distance, I hope you understand this much distance. This is the trace. Means if I, if this much distance. D initially here, finally it came here. You can see the change in angle. Same distance I move, there is a change in angle. Still, there is a change in angle. There is a change. So as I move on this, the angle change, there is a change in the angle. 
Now you see what I wanted to observe is when I move over here, change in angle is something. But whereas when I move here, change in angle is enormous. You see, for just this much distance I move, this much is the change in angle. Let us try to see this more carefully. Uh, what I will do is I will switch on the trace point, show trace. Okay. So this means you can see how much D has moved. You see, you can see that darker uh, blue. When D moves this much, see, initially the angle is 31.41 degrees. Finally, the angle is 39.57. So 31, 32, 37, so 8 degrees approximately. When I move from here to here, it has changed 8 degrees. I hope everybody understands this point, what I'm trying to tell. When I move on the ellipse from this point where the angle is 30 degrees nearly to this point, angle is 40 degrees. So change in angle is 10 degrees from here to here. Similar distance, I will try to move here. Let us see what happens. Similar distance, I will try to move here. Here, and change in angle is about, as I told you, now I will start moving here. Similar distance. If I move, you see, Initially, it is 60 degrees say, approximately. Here, the angle is 60 degrees, 64, whatever, 65, doesn't matter. You can take it here only. You'll take it from here, okay, 70, whatever, somewhere, 65, we will take, okay. So, here, 65 degrees. I will move this much distance. With this much distance, the change in angle was about 10 degrees. Same amount, if I move from here to here, you see the change is now 92, means change is 65 to 92 which is nearly 30 degrees. So that means what I'm trying to tell is that if you move, if you move this point from here to here, uh, this is the problem. One minute. When I move point from here to here, change in angle is just 10 degrees. Similar distance I move from here to here, change in angle is nearly 20 or even 30. So that means here, change in angle is much more compared to change in angle here. So we say curvature is much more here compared to curvature here. Here you see you have to travel long distance, but change in angle is not much of course there is change but not much here similar distance you travel the change in angle is enormous so it is the change in angle which will which you have to capture so here we say it is curvature is very high and here we say curvature is very low here curvature is low because it's not curving too much that means the angle which tangent makes with the x-axis is not changing too much whereas here it is changing enormously Enormously means you have to compare the same amount of arc length means here how much distance you move here also you move similar amount of distance then the change in angle is much more here compared to change in angle here magnitude of it is what I'll consider because when I come here this side there will be a sign problem uh, many textbooks ignore that but good textbooks will not ignore that so we have to be careful about it I'll make this definition clear when I show you the slides maybe this is the time to do that so i have shown you a para similarly okay you can check out parabola also that's also a good example to check so let me show you parabola and uh, try to see the uh, how uh, parabola okay how do i do oh, yeah okay y is equal to y square equal to 4x so y square equal to 4x so this is the parabola uh, you now again i'll pick a point on always we do this pick a point on the curve and i'll draw a tangent to that tangent to the curve at that point and try to see the angle between
will intersect this. We want to find this point of intersection of tangent with x axis. Okay, this is the point, and then I want uh, I want this angle. Which angle do I want? This point, and if I choose this angle from this point to this point to this point, this is the angle under consideration. So now when I move this point on this, uh, you see there is a change in angle. The angle changes. So when you come here, the angle changes very fast. And here, angle change, change in angle is lower. So we say this is less curved compared to here. Here, the angle change is much more. So the curvature is much more here compared to here. So these are a few examples. Whereas for a straight line, the curvature doesn't change at all. How do I know that? So let us start with a uh, uh, straight line. Let us start with a straight line. This again, we'll do the same construction. So let's start with any straight line. Now I don't want to see this point A and B. So what I will do is, Okay, and then I'll pick a point, any point on the uh, straight line. Now, if I draw a tangent to straight line, passing through this point means it's the straight line itself. So that means I'm interested in this angle. Which angle am I interested in? So this is the angle I'm interested in. D, oh, this point of intersection I did not say. Okay, sorry. So I had to do that also. Yeah, this GeoGebra only problem is we'll have to do all the constructions beforehand. I have not done that, so. <clears throat> so this angle is what I want to measure. D, G, E. Now, what I want you to observe is, yeah, it's very elementary, but uh, what I want you to observe is when I move the C on the straight line, the angle doesn't change at all. How did I get that angle? From this point, you draw a tangent to the curve. The curve is the straight line. So tangent to the straight line means the straight line itself. Now. So when I move the point on the straight line, the angle doesn't change at all. So we say this straight line is not at all curved. You remember in the previous cases, when the point moved on the curve, this angle kept changing. That's what I said is the measure of curvature. So that's what we are doing here. With the straight line angle doesn't change at all. That's why it's called straight. So we say the curvature is zero for this. So I hope this gives a rough idea of what curvature is all about. Uh, let us uh, let me continue with the uh, uh, talk. So here, so we have understood straight line. Why straight line is not curved? We say circle with smaller radius is more curved. This also are illustrated. So we want to capture curvedness of a curve by what do we want, we want to define curvature. So example that I've given you of ellipse, parabola, straight line, circle, all of them I have given. So this is the, so in general, let y equal to fx be a curve in Cartesian plane. Right now I've taken examples of straight line, parabola, ellipse, and circle, but it can be any curve, it doesn't matter. Choose any point on that curve, draw a tangent to the curve at that point. I'll draw the picture in one minute. An angle between the tangent and positive x-axis, I'll call it psi. This is the angle between the tangent and the positive x-axis. This is our usual notation, psi. Magnitude of rate of change of psi with respect to the arc length, s. That means how the arc length is changing when I move p on the curve. That rate of change of psi with respect to arc length is said to be the curvature of f at p. Let me show an example that may be, I mean, I've show, shown you already several examples. Now I will give you an explicit one. Let me see this. Uh, yeah, this is the one. So let us start with some curve, y equal to fx. Some curve, I don't know, I don't have an equation for this. Some curve. Let me choose an arbitrary point P on this. This is the example. This is what I said I will do. Just recall. I have a curve Fx. I choose a point P on that. I draw a tangent to the curve at P. 
So how do I draw a tangent to the curve? I've already done it. So here it is. This is the tangent. So you can see as I move P, the tangent is also changing. This is a freehand curve. So the curve, you know, tangent will vary very badly. In a sense, it's not a smooth, nice curve. So the tangent will go up and down, up and down, up and down. And one angle between the tangent and the positive x-axis is called psi. So let me call that. This is psi. The angle between the tangent and the positive x-axis is called psi. Now, the magnitude of rate of change of psi with respect to arc length, that's what it means. So that means when I move P here, you see psi is changing. You can see I'm not given the numbers here. You can see the numbers here if you want to, but you don't need to see. You can make out clearly that as I move P on the curve, psi is changing. You see? Here you can't even see because that's how the position of the graph is. So let me try to incorporate that also. Okay. So as I move P, you can see psi is changing. As I move P on the curve, psi is changing. So how change in psi divided by change in arc length, limit of, uh, you know, in limit where p and point next to the der derivative of this tan psi basically not even psi tan psi is called the curvature i'll tell you the precise definition i just want you to understand that as i move the point on the curve the angle which is being shown there is changing how did i get that angle let me repeat you took that point on the curve drew a tangent to the curve at that point and then intersected that curve, not intersected. You took the angle that tangent makes, makes with the x-axis. As I move the point on the curve, the angle is changing. This rate of change of this angle with respect to arc length is precisely what is known as uh, curvature. So that is the, uh, so we took a curve, we took a point and drew a tangent to the curve at that point angle between the tangent and the positive x-axis was denoted psi. Magnitude of rate of change of psi with respect to arc length at P is defined to be the curvature of F at P. Uh, in symbols, it is denoted kappa. Kappa is, is the curvature at P of the curve F is d psi by ds. Psi is the angle uh, made by the tangent uh, with positive x-axis. S is the arc length. Uh, so this is called curvature and uh, very often the curvature itself is not a very good uh, parameter to play with. Actually, it's the reciprocal of curvature, which we know as radius of curvature. Uh, I will explain this part again. Uh, I'll show you some examples. What is radius of curvature? Uh, I will explain, but for right now, definition is 1 by kappa, which is mod of 1 by d psi by ds, which is ds by d psi. That means how the arc length changes with respect to the angle. That is what is important, and that is radius of curvature. So, and in applications, actually, psi and s we never get. We get f equal to uh, y equal to f of x, or f is equal to r theta, or something like that. r and theta, if it's polar form, if it's Cartesian coordinates, x and y. That is what we'll have. We never get a relation between psi and s. But we need to cook up this relation. How to do it? I won't tell you because it's not in your syllabus. But I couldn't go away without telling that. So I have written this, written this proof of uh, radius, how to compute radius of curvature. This is not important from an examination point of view. But I'll still explain this. Uh, you see, we know tan psi is dy by ds. This we know because what is the geometric interpretation of dy? So y equal to fx. Some curve is there, yx. And dy by dx is the derivative of y with respect to x, which is same as tan psi. So it's all usual notations. Differentiate this with respect to s. That means I have to use chain rule. d by ds of tan psi is d by ds of dy by dx. d by ds of tan psi. Remember, derivative of tan x is secant square x. So derivative of tan psi is secant square psi into d psi by ds, chain rule, because psi s is sitting hidden in psi. And similarly, d by ds of dy by dx. So right hand, left hand side is clear. d by ds of tan psi is secant square psi d psi by ds. Right hand side is d by ds of dy by dx. That I'll multiply and divide by dx. This is a, you know, just an algebraic uh, manipulation. 
uh, theoretically correct, but we have not given you any explanation how you can multiply and divide by dx and things like that. But uh, I will not bother too much about it. Mm, d by dx of dy by dx into dx by ds. But I know dx by ds is cos psi. dx by ds is cos psi. How do I know that? Uh, I You can see it in the picture roughly. You see here, psi is here. Cos psi is adjacent side by hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, if you take a small elemental length here, hypotenuse corresponds to S and side, this side corresponds to X. So X by S is in some sense cos psi. I know it's not very accurate, but let's not split hair here. DX by DS is cos psi and D psi by DS is one by rho. This is the definition. D psi by DS is one by rho. So you substitute all this thing here. So secant square one by rho is d square y by dx square. Here I'll get d square y by dx square into cos psi. So secant square and cos. So there must be some, you know, cos. If I take it down here, it'll become secant cube. And anyway, I want rho. So you do this algebraic manipulation. Rho is equal to, if you take cos psi down, it'll become one by cos psi. So you take it up, it'll become secant psi. So already secant square was there. So secant cube psi divided by this part, d square y by dx square. So secant square is same as one plus tan square. So I rewrite this. So one uh, tan, why did I do this? Because tan psi I know is dy by dx. So this is one plus tan square whole to the power of three by two divided by d square y by dx square. So everything is now in terms of y and x. That was what I wanted. Instead of that row being in terms of uh, uh, d psi by ds, I wanted it to be in terms of y and x. Here is the relation. So this last line is what is important for you from the examination point of view. So given a curve, if I want to find curvature, radius of curvature at some point, I have to basically uh, evaluate dy by dx, d square y by dx square, plug into this formula. Easy way to remember is this dy by dx, I call it y1, d square y by dx square, I call it y2. So it is one plus y1 square three whole power three by two divided by mod of y2. Remember many textbooks, many places, they are not given this mod. Without this, the formula is wrong. I'll show you examples why the formula is wrong. So please remember this uh, formula. This is important for you from an examination point of view. So what have we done here? So recall. I have a curve y equal to fx. This curve y equal to fx is given to me or yx itself. It doesn't matter. Uh, yx and uh, I want to find the radius of curvature at some particular point. So radius of curvature is given by this formula. If I know y of x, I know y dy by dx. I know d square y by dx squared. Given point, we have to evaluate these derivatives at appropriate point. Uh, this is the definition. Uh, only one problem is there. At places, dy by dx may become infinity. That means the slope of the tangent to a curve may become infinity. For example, you take a uh, uh, circle for which uh, y axis is a tangent. So then at that point, dy by dx is infinity. But then rho is infinity is not correct. So you can't use this formula. There is an alternate formula. Uh, that you express instead of y in terms of x, you express it x in terms of y. Uh, this is the formula in that case. Normally, for an examination point of view, people don't ask these kind of questions, but you should be aware of this, that it is same as this. Instead of dy by dx, you'll have dx by dy. Means you have to think of how x is changing with respect to y instead of y changing with respect to x. I will not go into write in the details of the proof, but anybody interested should be able to follow it up. Otherwise, you have my email address. You can always send it to me. I'll explain. Rho is when this is the case when dy by dx is infinity. Both can be infinity, obviously. Uh, 1 plus dx by dy whole square whole to the power of 3 by 2 divided by a oh, mod. I missed out a mod here. There is a mod here. Uh, so please note that. I must write this mod. Otherwise, it is wrong. <coughs> So without that mod, it is not correct. So this mod is there. So rho is one plus dx by dy whole square whole to the power of three by two divided by mod of d square x by dy square. Here, curve is given as x 
is a function of y. Y is the independent variable here. This happens when I uh, have tangent to the curve is having slope infinity. So this is roughly the you know rough idea, intuitive meaning of uh, curvature and radius of curvature. Remember, radius of curvature is one by curvature. So if I want to find radius of curvature, all I have to do is take the reciprocal of this and uh, that will give me uh, curvature and radius of curvature. So given a function, given a curve, how to find radius of curvature is like this. I'll show you several examples next class. Today's class was only, this session was only to give you a rough idea, intuitive idea about what uh, curvature is. So I hope uh, I made sense. Curvature is basically what we have seen today. Curvature is basically uh, if I have a curve and a point is moving on that curve, I draw the tangent to the curve at various uh, point at given point, and I'll see the angle between the tangent and the positive x-axis, how it is changing with respect to the arc length. That is the definition of um, uh, uh, curvature. Here I've given you an example. As the point moves on the curve, you can see psi is changing. D psi by D S S is the arc length. That is length on this uh, curve. So how D psi by D S magnitude of that is called the curvature. You see here, little bit movement of S, that angle changes a lot. Here, lot of movement also, angle doesn't change much. So here, less curvature and here it is more curved. So that's the kind of argument, that's the kind of intuitive feeling one wants you to have uh, with this definite. So uh, what is the expression for this? Uh, expression for uh, this uh, curvature, I just showed you. I don't know why did I close this, just one minute. Expression for curvature is this, and this is what you need to know for your examination that uh, d, given a curve dy by dx you should be able to find d square y by dx square you should be able to find substitute that in this if dy by dx is infinity you may have to use this formula i'll stop here uh, we will continue with uh, next class i'll continue with more examples uh, maybe next time whenever we start